Welcome back to Let's Play The Messenger. I'm Burning Dog Face, and we're looking at the title screen because I just noticed a thing. That little dude I found shows up on my save file. What's up with that? I didn't put him in my inventory. At least I'm pretty sure I didn't. He teleported away, didn't he? Weird. Oh, right, that guy. <sighs> right, the sliding. Oh god, I'm really in for it today. Whatcha? Now I've got your number, you ass. No! Bye! I don't think he enjoyed that very much. Why am I over here? How in the balls do I get that one? Oh, I know. Okay. Let's pretend that made any sense and just go with it. Need more health. Oh, right! My spider sense warned me that, uh. They could shoot through walls at the last. R? Okay, I can get up there from over there. Okay, I suddenly saw a use for that down attack, which was, uh... Uh, dodging out of the way of fireballs I'm about to float into. But only when I'm moving straight down. Hey, I need that. That I wanted to mention. Oh, that's right! I'm filming this on Tuesday. So, happy Star Wars Day, Burning Dog fans. May the 4th be with you. Oh, there, oh okay, that's what that was. There's a. <clears throat> that's where I found the. God damn it, me. That's where I found the uh, power seal up in the right there. But now it's a ghost of a power seal. Uh, uh, uh. Sorry, enough screwing around. Who designed this place? Why are the rocks only on this side of the things? Oh no. Is that the trick here? Yes, okay, I just panicked last time and ended up in the spikes before I found this place. Nice! Oh, wasn't planning that through at all. No! Oh. Well, that was embarrassing. Stupid ice, stupid demons! Not you. Stupid! Damn it! Ah! Sure, we can come out slightly above the sword. I have learned this. Screw it. I didn't even know I didn't even touch the snow. Or the jump pad, for that matter. I'll do better in the next boss fight. I mean, I keep winning, but... It always feels like there's some detail I'm missing. Oh. Apparently, during the Queen of Quills fight, uh, what I was meant to do was to 
slash the flowers that come rushing at you, and use Cloud Step to get up to the queen to slash her while she's hanging from those rings. It's also how it's meant to deal with those really tall flowers. You can't quite reach with a sword. That's why they always those ones always showed up with another one. I'm going to pretend that was on purpose, because it looked badass. Oops. Hmm. No, wait! Oh. What was the other one? Oh, uh, during the fight against the ogres... The... I don't remember which one is which. Something I didn't pick up on, according to, uh, you know, the helpful advice of friends. Uh, and again, this is only after the fight, but I was told that the orange one can be it cannot be attacked from the front, but he can be freely attacked from behind, whereas the green one can freely be attacked from the front, but not from behind. It's an arm day, leg day thing, I guess. You know, with the rest of their design. No. That wasn't too bad, all things considered. But, oh god, I was kind of hoping that... Ah, oh, Jesus! I was kind of hoping that cloud stepping wouldn't be as big a deal as I w feared it would be. things I can do. I guess when I get to, one, to a boss fight in this game, my brain instinctively goes to how it worked back in the day. I mean, I wasn't even good at games back in the day, but... It was basically, okay, you've made it to the boss. Now, turn off the part of your brain responsible for all that crazy platforming shit you can do, and focus exclusively on the simple fighting abilities. There were exceptions to that. I mean, consider, uh, The Legend of Zelda was an exception to that, and it became so popular that it launched a huge franchise. Oh god damn it, are you the boss fight? I'd rather not touch this while the shopkeeper is away. Words of wisdom. You really thought it would be that easy? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to guess that's related to a thing that, uh... I was advised by more than one person to try continuously poking this thing a bunch of times in a row, rather than once per visit. Don't be that guy. <laughs> You're being that guy. Fine, be that guy. Ten. Oh, God. Nine. Eight. I feel like I have to do it now. Just uh, for the content. Seven. Six. Is he, gonna, is he gonna jump scare me or something? Oh, God.
Hmm. I feel like I'm doing it right now. Only you can put an end to this optional bit. Which is good, because I got things to do. If I repeat the same thing three times, do you think I'm out of flavor text? We're done here. We're done here. We're done here. I can't believe you! Why won't you move on to something productive? I ask myself that question literally every day, my friend. Like maybe advancing the quest you're supposed to care about. I'm not gonna lie, though, when the time comes, opening the cabinet will blow your mind. And I'm confident in saying this, even though I know you will be expecting a surprise. The meta plot twist. That was weird. Okay! I guess we'll just guess what the boss fight is. It's going to be a giant hamburger with a mustache and a monocle called Sir Burgington, who... has the powers of capitalism. I don't fucking know. Oh. Oh, he made it! Does this mean we can do the thing? Keep your hood on, shorty. He still needs to pass the final test. Now, I think that's the one we know, and that's the one in the back. But I want to do the thing! Oh no, we need to see how tuned to the scroll he really is. Great, take it away, prophet. <clears throat> Welcome, messenger! Please hold the scroll aloft so that the prophecy might be fulfilled! See, I told you he was slow. Yeah, you weren't kidding. Ahem. Please hold the scroll higher than that, so that the prophecy might be fulfilled. Oh. Uh. Now this is happening. Whoa! He... He made it! Of all would-be messengers! Him?! Please pull this off, I really want to do the thing. And a gauntlet awaits you, messenger! Should you survive, find us at the top of the Tower of Time! Bye. Achievement unlocked, Glacial Peaked. Get to the top of the mountain. Hmm. Hmm. Incredibly, fleeing does not seem to be an option. Tower of Time. Kind of getting a Daft Punk feeling in this one. R.I.P. Oh, balls. Oh, actually they move at exactly the same speed as me, that was easy. Oh, for a second I thought that was a swastika up here. Jeez. Ah! No! Why couldn't I... Oh, God. Oh, my B. I wasn't even paying attention to that. Sorry about that. Hmm. I 
fucking lasers and well, I guess you know the unexpectedly technologically advanced final dungeon is totally a thing, isn't it? Just a regular trope, not even an ah fuck NES thing. God damn you, rope dart! Okay! Worked that time. Ah, 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 ah. Jeepers, I've never been turned into pure energy before. Whoa. I'm sorry, what? Ah, yes, the big reveal. Indeed, my dear adventurer, you had been teleporting into this very room all along. So where are we? In the Tower of Time. And where is that? Surely you mean when? To be honest, I don't really know. The tower is a device that travels through time. It manifests to test messengers who are deemed worthy in order to relocate them as needed. Where will it take me? When? It will take you to the time most in need of a messenger. That is, if the tower doesn't kill you, of course. Need anything? There once was a land filled with bogs. And these bogs, they were filled with evil monsters. Sleeping underwater during the day, they were kept at bay by the moon during nighttime. Well, when she was kind enough to be around. After all, the moon was free to travel through space, and often felt like shining her light on other realms. It's a fun uh, explanation for the cycles of the moon, or the phases of the moon, rather. <clears throat> One day the moon got bored and decided to visit the bog land in human form. Wearing a cloak so that her light wouldn't shine through, she hoped to catch a glance of the evil creatures. Getting more than people... What? Oh, getting more than people wandering haphazardly in cursed lands usually bargain for, she encountered a man uh, fleeing a group of monsters. I think I pressed the space bar by accident when I was uh, adjusting my keyboard's position on the... desk. Uh, confident in her power, she removed her cloak, creating a glittering aura of protection to help the man escape. Escape he did, but as he looked back, he could see that his savior had put her cloak back on a little too soon. She was captured by the creatures, and then buried her under a rock so that her light would never shine again. They would rule the night. But our survivor was quick to gather a group of peasants who went to remove the big rock and set the moon free. A strong bond was formed on that day, and she decided to become their guardian. To this day, the moon is there to guide human travelers through the night. The end. Oh, I liked that one. I guess it speaks to the power of cooperation? Maybe. To be honest, I only wanted to use the word haphazardly in a story. <laughs> that is silly, and I like it. Uh, that's a grand... You know, even though I was reading the words out loud, I think my brain went into autopilot for part of that, because I don't remember the middle bit. Alright, and uh, to finish this episode out, let's hear the other thing, even if we're doing it in the wrong order. Hey, if it's, we're inside a time machine, it's probably appropriate to do things in the wrong order. Oh. You can just barge into my lab and go through my stuff like you own the place. There's no skeleton in there, I promise. Hey, don't touch. I think that last one is a reference to... I want to say Ultima 9. There was an Easter egg somewhere in there where if you opened and closed a refrigerator a whole shitload of times in a row, the next time you opened it, there would be a bloody skeleton inside. Hey, don't touch. It's empty anyway. Don't make me lock it. Why don't you put that curiosity to good use in the outside world and maybe, I don't know, save humanity? If you touch that again, you'll have to sit through my boring story.
I'm warning you, it's boring. It's philosophical. I'll even remove your ability to skip what I'm saying. I don't know I had that. This is your last warning. I don't know if I have time for that in this video, to be honest. Okay. I guess I'll just start the next video with that, then, and we can move on from there. Just in case it's like a joke where it goes on for like ten minutes. <laughs> I doubt it very much, but you know! I'm a responsible kind of guy. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'll see you in the next episode of Let's Play The Messenger, when we continue annoying our friend and find out what uh, becomes of us. Later!